In this episode, I overlook these strange looking hills called chocolate hills, get up close with the most adorable and cutest monkeys called tarsiers, snorkel amongst hundreds of fish, as well as even swimming with turtles, and bathe in the sun on a sandbar in the middle of the sea. Hey, I'm Andy and welcome to my Bajo episode in the Philippines, where I spend just 48 hours in the south of Bajo showcasing the main things to do. If you missed my previous episode where I was on the small island of Shargao, I checked out this amazing rock pool in the middle of the sea, explored a pitch black underground cave, nearly got swept out to sea, and viewed the vast amount of coconut trees. Now, it all might sound fun, however, the weather certainly wasn't on my side and was probably the worst week I've ever had on holiday. So, if you want to check it out, I'll leave a card above. So, after a stressful 24 hours, I thankfully leave my time in Shargao and made it to Boho from Cebu by boat. Made it to my accommodation and just chilled for the rest of the day and I really needed it. It was that stressful. The next day, I got up early and drove to the Chocolate Hills, a really popular tourist attraction that has between 1,000 to 2,000 grass-covered hills. There is a viewing platform at the main resort where you can venture up some stairs, which can be busy or really slow-moving other tourists that you just want to push back down the hill out of frustration. But once at the top, you can see the vast amount of green and brown hills over the 20 square mile area. The Chocolate Hills name comes from when the different seasons change. The colour of the hills change from green to chocolate brown. It was annoying I couldn't fly the drone here though. No idea as it would have been cool to see them more up and close. They are pretty huge hills though, lovely round shaped boobies, <laughs> pretty much. I don't think you can physically hike up them, just to look at really. And you won't be spending much time here after a good viewing of them in 360 degrees. There's just a few shops around selling souvenirs and a chocolate hill sign to take a picture in front of and yeah, that's it. So you'd only be here for maximum an hour or so. Next up, I visited the Boho Tarsia Conservation Area, another popular tourist attraction to do in the Philippines because they are home to a particular kind of animal called a Tarsia. The place we went to was a small forest type of place where you walk around looking for these small, adorable looking creatures. And boy, were they small. Most of them were all sleeping or clinging onto trees and branches, just looking super cute. Sometimes they're really hard to find as of the smallness of them and they like to hide in places, so it was a real job looking high and low for them. Most were hiding their faces at the time until I came across one where it showed its infamous big bulging eyes, which you may have recognised from photos online maybe. Incredible to think that each eyeball weighs more than their entire brain. <laughs> they are an endangered species, which is why sanctuaries and conservation camps are set up in the Philippines to help with the dwindling population. After learning about the little guys, I made it down the road to something called Billa Man-Made Forest. Literally a forest that you probably wouldn't take much notice of as it just looks like a normal forest. However, all the trees have been individually planted as part of a reforestation project that started over 50 years ago. I'm not too sure why it's rated so highly on Google because after about 30 seconds or so of looking at it, I thought, I don't see what the attraction is. Yeah, I, I really don't see the fascination. You honestly won't stay here that long. As I was traveling back home, I thought I'd take a pit stop off at the Baclayan Church. Again, another popular tourist attraction. If you're into your churches, this is simply one of the oldest Catholic churches in the Philippines, built in 1727. I never went inside as I think it was closed, but yeah, it's a church. 
And then later on, I just finished my evening chilling in a bar, observing people's <laughs> poor chat up skills. The next day, I went on a snorkeling boat tour with a group of people, and we went to different areas around the island, hunting for different wonderful sea creatures. They did also promise us that we'd see dolphins on the tour, and we did see some as they were swimming and jumping over the waves, which was pretty cool. However, we weren't the only tour boat on the water at the time. Maybe there was around, I don't know, a dozen or so boats on the water, all getting in the way of my shot and disturbing the dolphins, so didn't properly get to see them. It was really quite annoying. We stopped off on a small island to get a small boat to go snorkeling because in this particular spot, the seabed had too much rocks and coral for the bigger boat to sail on. And it was quite easy to see under the water before we even got in. It was that blue. There were some spots where there wasn't much fish or coral around. Then there were some that were just teeming with sea creatures from small ones to big ones, all different shapes and colors too. And most weren't even too scared to swim around us. There was even a few finding Nemo fish. <laughs> I don't know the correct name for them. And then we came across one of my favorite reptilians, a big old turtle just chilling on the seabed. Surprised someone managed to spot him. I didn't have any fins to swim down that far, but my guide did, and he took the camera and got some shots of the little guy. And until watching the footage back, I noticed there was a fish underneath him hitching a ride. I'm presuming for safety maybe from predators. And then a little later on, we came across another one a bit more closer to the surface. My guide snatched my camera at my hand to film my footage, so I thought, well, I've got to get involved too, eh? <laughs> God, it really is hard to keep up with them. <laughs> They're just such magnificent creatures, but this time I got really nice and close to it. And then our last stop on the tour was visiting a really, really tiny island with a nearby sandbar. If you don't know what a sandbar is, it's literally a piece of land that the sea at times of the day doesn't cover or either doesn't cover at all, which leaves behind shallow water and your own private island. Well, I say private, you are with other people and there is nothing else on this sandbar but you. However, although there isn't nothing to do and nothing around you, I really liked it here. You know, just the sun beating down on you, crystal clear blue water, and amazing 360 degree views of just pure sea and the small island nearby, and that's it. I think we probably stayed for maybe half an hour or so, but I could have stayed for a good couple of hours if I had my say. It was just so relaxing, just strolling around, laying in the sea and just soaking up the sun. And also just flying my drone around, seeing far and wide in this surreal environment. I've been to sandbars before in the Philippines, but there's just something about this one that just puts it definitely at the top of my list. It's been a great 48 hours or so in Bohol. I really needed it after a stressful week in Shargao. I would have liked to have stayed longer and seen more of the island. Maybe I will when I come back another time in the future. I feel like I've packed a lot in a short amount of time and hit the main tourist attractions. After my journey here, I went off to Thailand and met up with a mate who I traveled Bali with. I didn't vlog there, just took loads of cool pictures and videos, which if you're interested in seeing, you can follow me here. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out this Boho episode. Hopefully it's made you want to check out the area if you plan on traveling this way. I'd say it should be on your list. Well, until the next one, I'll see you soon. Bye.